All right, hello everyone. Uh, in this quick supplemental video, I just want to cover very briefly how to implement lists in your solution. As part of your final assignment, uh, there are some marks assigned to implementing a list um, to manage some objects. And so here, I just really quickly want to go over the details for how you would go about implementing a list and how it can be used. And then just briefly, some of the pros versus cons uh, when we talk about lists, array lists, and arrays. Um, and then there's additional information that is posted to the course site. So go check that out. There's a PDF document and a link, and you can get more information there. Uh, and I encourage you to do so. Follow up with the materials online and try to experiment and explore as much as, as possible. As you can see on the screen in front of me here, uh, I've got really just, you know, a simple implementation here. We've got a program and a very basic class. The purpose of the class is really just to demonstrate how we can work with our own user defined classes with a list. Um, so it doesn't do much. We just got a person, they've got a name and a name property and, and that's about it. I left the comments out, etc. cetera. It's, it's just there to demonstrate how we can work with our own user defined classes in a solution. So uh, just to really get into it then, in our program, uh, when it comes to managing multiple numbers of objects to this point, we've really only been able to work with arrays. And of course, we can create an array for any type, whether it's built in, pre-existing, or user-defined. And so in this case, if I wanted to create an array that could store a number of, of person objects in it, we would define first the type person with the brackets. We could give it a name. Uh, the editor here is quite nice, says I'll probably want to pluralize that. So we'll find, we'll create people. And, and now this is where the thing starts to fall apart. If we don't know ahead of time what our maximum number of, of people is going to be or have a good idea, we're left having to kind of guess, you know, what a maximum top end number would be. And then also having to track a logical size within the array. There are some workarounds. Um, you know, in the array class that we could use in C sharp, but in, in general speaking, you know, managing an array is something that we have to do manually. So here we could define something like, you know, we could define a new person array and maybe that holds, um, 10, 10 person objects. And so this isn't new. We've, we've seen this already, but again, the limiting factor here is that we can hold at most 10. And if we don't have 10, we've got to manage that, uh, with a secondary variable to track the logical size. We also don't get any real help um, in managing this array. It's all really up to us. So managing, if we wanted to insert um, new person objects, if we wanted to remove person objects, and again, we're capped at 10 as a maximum. So if we wanted to go beyond that, we'd have to implement some way of creating a new array that's got space for new objects and then copying the existing objects into that new array, et cetera. So it, it works, we can manage with it, but there's got to be an easier way. And so rather than defining our own kind of customized list object, there are a couple of options that are available in C sharp already. So the two that we're going to look at are array list briefly, um, and, and I'll show you how that works and why we don't recommend using it. And then there's uh, the list, which is what is recommended. It implements generics in C sharp so that we can create a type safe collection whereas the array list is not type safe. The array is found in the system collections uh, namespace and our list will be in the system collections generic namespace. So we can include those now. So we're gonna be using system collections. That'll give us access to and the array list. And then we're also gonna to have to be using system oops, collections generic. And that will give us access to uh, our list class. So just what we'll do here is we'll just create all of these. So we have a people array. We'll now create a people one, which is an array list. So we can define an array list using the, the type array list. I'm going to call this people one. And we define it in the same way that we would create any object. So we can say we want to create a new array list. And that's basically it. So what an array list allows is it's kind of in the name. It, it behaves like an array so we can create or hold a collection of, of objects, but it also performs, you know, typical tasks of what we would find um, implemented 
for the list. So you'll notice, first of all, I haven't provided any uh, arguments to the default constructor, right? It's just array list. That's it. And the nice thing, the, the first pro we get out of the bag here is array lists are dynamically sized. So we don't have to know what our maximum top end number of elements in the array list is going to be. As we continue to add elements to the array list, that all gets managed um, automatically. We don't have to worry about, well, do I have enough room or not, et cetera. And then the other thing that array lists give us are a number of methods that make working with the elements that are in the array list a, a little bit easier. Now, the downside to working with array lists is that they are not type safe. Okay, and so you have to manually manage the type of objects or data that are stored in the array list, which by default, you know, is it's still better than dealing with an array, but it adds another layer of complexity. Okay. Now the third thing that we're going to implement is the the type safe list. So we define that a little bit differently. So rather than just defining array list and give it a name and then we can just put anything in it, we have to define the type that we're going to store in the list. So here you'll notice I've got these, uh, right, the angle brackets, the chevrons, I've got list, and then inside these I've defined the type. So this list can only hold uh, elements that are of type person. So we're getting type safety straight out, whereas the array list allows us to put anything. A list is only going to allow us to put in the type that we define. So I'm going to call this people2. Oops. And again, here you'll see it's very similar to defining uh, an array list, but it's different in that we have to also define that the list is going to hold person. So here are our three options for managing a large number of elements. Again, we've already seen how arrays work. We know what the limitations are there. Array lists and lists are very similar. The major difference is that a list gives us type safety. So what I'm going to do here really quickly is just define a very simple uh, person object. So I'm going to call it person, oops, person. We'll create with a default constructor and then we'll give this person a name. So the name is going to be whatever. Okay, there we go. And so now that I've got this reference to a person object, we can do things like store them in any one of these these lists. So as we've seen already, putting an object into an array is pretty straightforward. So if we access our people, which is our original array, we can identify an index and we can assign a value to it, right? So we can take our person reference and we can assign it here. If we wanted to do the same thing with the array list, oops, that would be people one, we need to use a, a method. So we call the, oops, we call the add method and we specify here the value that we want to add. So in this case, I want to add my person object to the list. So in a sense, these, these two statements are equivalent as far as it goes for storing an element in the array or the array list. In the array, we need to explicitly state where in the array we'd like to assign. With the array list, we just simply say add it and it automatically gets added to the list. And if you continue to add objects to the list, or sorry, to the array list, they'll just get appended one after the other. So we don't have to manage indices. We just say add it, it gets added, it's managed. We don't really have to, to worry about it. If you access the dot operator, um, oops, on our array list, you'll see the different methods that are available. So you can sort, you can define a comparator, you can perform then binary searches, you can add you know, single objects, you can add ranges, right? You can get a count uh, of how many elements are in the array. So we don't have a length per se. We have a count um, that it can be used. You, you can insert elements. So you could find a particular position in the array list and insert an element at that place. It's just a little bit easier to work with. Removing elements, uh, we just specify the element that we want to remove, which is another option versus removing at a particular index. So remove at would be similar to what we would typically see with an array where we have to specify the index value. But the difference there is if you wanted to remove an element from an array, you could, you know, replace the, the element at, at a particular index with like a null reference or something, but the index still exists. So what you would have to do is, you know, shift all of the elements that come after down one 
it becomes kind of a, a pain here just removing it removes it and it's all managed again we don't have to do any of that manually so it makes working with collections of objects uh, a lot simpler now the downside to working with an array list is that again it's not type safe by default so there's nothing preventing us from doing something like hey I'd like to add you know a, an integer to my array list and and this is fine right so I can add a person object to the, the array list and I can also add a plain old integer value to the array list which is which is not great because if if now I were tra to traverse the array list and think I have only person objects in it I don't right this is not a person object I'm not going to be able to to work with that or manage that it's very very um, it's, it's confusing right to say the least so so that's kind of the downside to using an array list and this is where the list picks uh, up the the slack so because we've defined our list as only being able to store references to person objects we wouldn't be able to do this so for example if we attempt the same type of thing with people two again we can add our person but if we try to do something like uh, what we've done previously with the array list where I add one two three four you'll see that that that's not allowed right and it sells here argument one cannot convert from int to a person right so we're getting type safety whereas the array list doesn't doesn't care our list does so now I don't have to worry about well what kinds of objects or values am I dealing with in this list they're going to be person objects <coughs> okay to illustrate one step further and let me just show you something here when we go to to access something back out of the array list for example let's say we defined a, a new person reference for our person so I'll, I'll just call this um, yeah person one you know these aren't the most descriptive names but that's fine if we have person one and we try to go to our people one array list right we could specify index zero right it's going to complain it's going to say hey you can't implicitly convert from type object so the array list is just storing everything in the array list as a type object uh, which is what enables this type of behavior so if, if I need to pull out an object I need to also now cast that object appropriately so I have to basically say take take whatever's at this index in the array list and turn it into a person object okay now that assumes a lot right that that assumes that whatever is here can in fact be created or cast as a person object it's kind of a, a leap of faith I hope so we know of course if we do something like this go to index one where there would be uh, this integer value so just to be clear this is index zero this would be index one if if we go to index one and try to say take this integer and convert it to a person that's not going to work out so well because this this clearly is not a person but you'll notice th there's nothing here at compile time that tells us hey you might have a problem with this we're left to just kind of hope okay whereas again doing something like that if we try to do um, person we'll say person two if we try to get a reference to the object that's in our our list so if we go to people two okay here we don't have that problem okay and the reason for that is people two is a list that only has person objects in it so we don't have to do this casting on the the list it, it's already by default that it's of type person so right you can see that here list of type person people is just an array list it just stores objects we have to now manage the types that are are in and out of them so so that's that's kind of basically how they work again the the impetus is on you as a student to dig in a little bit and research and learn a little bit more about how lists work um, as part of the assignment. But I just wanted to give you a brief intro to you know how to go about working with them, the required namespaces, uh, and the pros and cons. So for your, your final assignments and in general, it's recommended that you go with the, the list. Um, do not go with an array list because then you're, again, left managing the types on your own it's also recommended to just basically implement uh, the list over the array list in the official Microsoft documents so 
that that's what you should be shooting for. Again, uh, the text does reference array lists briefly, so I, I know you've probably read about them and you're curious about should I use them or should I not. The short answer is no. Don't use an array list. Use a list. Hopefully, this little bit of code here gives you an example of why. I've shown you how to create the list, how to add, how to access. Very similar to regular lists. Yeah, you can also use for each loops. Um, and like I said, there's a count property, not a, a length property that you would use to get the, the number of elements that are in there. Um, but that's, that's basically it. Okay. I'm not going to say anything else about it. Uh, we're at the very end of the course. This is the last little bit, uh, of information that I'm going to provide. The rest of it is all on you. So good luck, happy coding, and I'll see you another time.